If a prominent content creator invited you to a mysterious compound for unknown reasons and then forced you to participate in a series of deadly challenges for a chance at YouTube fame, what would you do? No, this wasn't my idea. Setting up all these different games takes too much work. If it were up to me, I'd just throw you all in a giant pit. Come back after a month to see what's left. Still, I gotta appreciate our MC's setup. Each game is designed to test your mind, your body, or your people skills. Some of them test all three. It's pretty much the kind of thing you could see Mr. Beast doing if YouTube relaxed their content guidelines a bit. One can only hope. I'm going to break down the mistakes made. What you should do is how to beat the death games in the Octo games. Jax Pro hates the fame. Don't get me wrong, he loves the money. But over time, having to wake up every morning and dance like a trained monkey for an audience of bedwetters just wears you down. I can relate. At any rate, he's devised what he feels to be the perfect exit strategy. All he needs to do is make one last video. It's gotta be big. To that end, he's invited 15 promising content creators out to the middle of nowhere to compete for the ultimate prize. Full control and ownership of Jax Pro's channel and all of his social media accounts. So, yeah, it's basically Willy Wonka, only a little bit more psychopathic. You see, I neglected to mention what happens to the losers, and apparently, so did Jax Pro, which is why our contestants all look so chipper going into our first game, Simon says. Now, in case you were raised in a doomsday cult, the rules of this game are simple. Contestants must obey any command that begins with the words Simon says. For example, Simon says, like this video, and then share it on your LinkedIn without context. However, if players follow a command that doesn't begin with Simon says, like this idiot who just put his hand on his head, they are eliminated. Easy, right? Well, you'd better hope so, because this is the price for failure. No, no! Dude, good luck getting this one monetized. Of course, Simon also didn't say attempt to flee, which knocks out three more contenders at the hands of fantastic Mr. Fox and a sharpshooter. And while I can understand the shock of watching someone get smashed to death right in front of you, you gotta believe they're not just gonna let you walk away after witnessing a murder. Clearly, this is the reason they took everyone's cell phones upon entry. Right now, the only real option is purposeful compliance. Just Play along until an opportunity presents itself to run or fight. Sure, if we all work together, we could probably overpower the fox dude and start smashing red shirts before the trigger men can pick us all off. But without coordinating ahead of time, there's no way of knowing whether the others will be willing to join in. After all, some of us might still want to play the game. In that case, the strategy here is pretty basic. Pay close attention to the commands. Don't take your eyes off the game master. The former is self-explanatory. As for the latter, maintaining a degree of tunnel vision will prevent us from copying the movements of those around us should they make a mistake. Plus, it'll keep us from looking at the bodies and psyching ourselves out. As for the commands themselves, they're not that complex, but the aforementioned strat could help us when we're told to stand on one leg while holding our breath. Staying calm allows you to hold your breath for longer periods, and fixating on a single point off in the distance can help you keep your balance. There's also some evidence that suggests the average person's better at balancing on their non-dominant leg, although it's far from definitive, so your results may vary. Ordinarily, Simon Says goes on until only one player remains, but in this case, the the game ends once we're down to eight, hence the oct in octo games. With the first round concluded, the surviving contestants are sent to the barracks to rest up ahead of the next challenge. For brevity's sake, and because it's really not all that interesting, I'm going to skip over most of what goes down between the games. But there's definitely some things worth going over here. First and foremost, it's important to remember that politics is inevitable. Lean too hard into the strong silent routine like Steven, aka a squish and you'll paint a target on your back. At the same time, trying too hard to make friends will make you seem untrustworthy and can even result in you getting your ass kicked. You can't do that. I'm a woman. Looks like he can. They are f shooting people in here. You think they give a f 
who hits who between rounds? After all, even if Squish had beaten Ruth to death, killing him as a punishment would just cost them another contestant. That being said, he's still a fool for doing that. No one's gonna want to work with someone who's that quick to fly off the handle. Fact is, teaming up might seem like a waste of time, since she'll almost certainly be forced to compete against each other eventually. But that only matters if you live long enough, and flying solo is a great way to wind up dead. The key thing to remember here is that we'll want to surround ourselves with people we know are weaker than us in some way to give ourselves the best chance of defeating them when the time comes. Knowing this, we'll want to give off the appearance of perfect mediocrity. Seem too competent and people will be afraid of you. Seem too worthless and you'll be seen as dead weight. Just keep in mind that if someone asks to team up with you, it's because they think that they have an advantage, which isn't necessarily a bad thing as long as you can play your cards right. Of course, the fact that we're all effectively being held hostage also presents a unique opportunity in that we can act as though we don't care about the game at all and are simply biding our time until we can escape. Building a team around this shared goal, like Carrie, Maxine, and AJ do, will create an element of trust which we can exploit later on. So this is definitely the approach I would take. So with that all out of the way, let's jump right into our second game, Hopscotch. The rules of hopscotch are hopscotch. Move from one side of the pattern to the other by placing one foot in each box. However, the organizers have added in a twist by crossing the game with red light, green light. Make a move while the lights are red and you're eliminated. Honestly, this one's probably the easiest out of all of them. And since it only ends when someone's eliminated, I could totally see us going again and again and again until someone makes a mistake or people start dropping from exhaustion. The most important thing to remember here is taking it slow. We weren't given a time limit, and the faster you move, the more momentum you'll carry. Meaning, it'll be much more difficult to stop on a dime when the lights turn red. I'd also want to linger a bit on the two square steps to try and avoid stopping while standing on one leg. It's not clear whether the light changes are random or not, but it's still worth a shot regardless. Ultimately, Miss Sunshine winds up getting herself eliminated by moving on red. And even then, only because Squish managed to reproduce the sound played during the light change. Either way, rules are rules. No, 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 no! That sucks. As for what we can take away from that chick's run, seems to me like panic is what really did her in. She went into that single step just fine, but clearly started freaking out after losing her balance, which likely contributed to her taking Squish's bait and hopping into an early grave. Now, I'm sure some of you are lauding the dude's use of perfect pitch, but just like putting the smack down on Ruth, this was a mistake. The way I see it, Sunshine probably would have fallen over no matter what, so pushing her over the edge like that only serves to make others dislike you, especially if she was part of a team. Guess we'll see how that works out for him. Moving on to round number three. This one's a bit different. First off, it's only optional, with the prize for completing it being the chance to go home early. And yeah, I'm not buying it. I mean, do you really think for a second they'd let someone go straight to the police while the game's still going on? Besides, even if they actually send you home, they never said whether you'd still be alive when that happens. Whatever the case, only one contestant takes up the challenge. According to Jax Pro, all she has to do is traverse the inflatable obstacle course in under a minute. However, what she doesn't find out until it's too late is that there's a furry freak with a pipe wrench in there waiting to bash her brains in. Yeah, in terms of strategy here, the best way to win is not to play. Only an idiot would assume Jax Pro's telling the truth about letting us go, and without being able to study the course ahead of time, there's no way of knowing whether it can even be completed at all. However, if I just had to do this, I would strip down into my underwear to make it harder for Fox Bro to grab a hold of me. Yeah. In fact, getting caught up nearly lands Jess a beatdown right beside the finish line. But with a little quick thinking and some strip mall self-defense training, she manages to reach the other side. Too bad it just wasn't fast enough. Yep, saw that coming. All right, next up we have musical chairs. What's next, hungry hippos? Jesus, it's 
use a little creativity here. Ugh, whatever. Just like normal, there's only five chairs in the middle and six of us. Music will play while we walk around the chairs, and when it stops, we all try to sit down. Whoever's left standing is out of the game, and according to Jax Pro, the first person out also gets eliminated. Now, if you've played this game before, you might think the best strategy would be to keep your back angled towards the chairs as you move to cut down on your sitting time. Of course, you probably weren't also fighting for your life in a competition where violence was not only allowed, but also encouraged. Guess it depends on where you went to preschool. As far as I can tell, the best way to play this game is to stay low and be prepared to fight to the death over your seat. Immediately attacking the person in front of you is also an option, as you only need to take out one player to ensure you had a spot. Either way, once I sat down, I'd hook my feet around the chair legs and keep my hands up to try and deflect any incoming blows. And if I landed in the same seat as someone else, like what happened with AJ and Ruth, you can bet I'm going to elbow them in the face until they give up, or they're dead. Instead, AJ simply tries bumping Ruth off the chair while still sitting down, which only serves to level the playing field and help her fight him off. Of course, it wouldn't have ever come down to this had he, Carrie, Maxine worked together as a team. You know, like they were supposed to. As a matter of fact, this is the first game we've seen so far wherein working as a team would lend you a major advantage. Think about it, the round doesn't end until all the chairs are taken so Team Nerd could just stay on their feet and single out one of the other competitors each time until we were the only three left. And since only the loser from round one is getting eliminated, it wouldn't really matter by then, right? Well, about that. In addition to offering the winner of this challenge one million dollars, Jax Pro decides to mix things up by eliminating whoever comes in second place instead. This brings us to Squish and Ruth to rehash that little dust up back in the barracks. Unfortunately for the latter, the best strategy here is to treat this round more like a cage match than a parlor game. And we all know Squish is no stranger to violence. <laughs> Bro, leave it to the professionals. After all, this video is going public. No point in going through all the trouble of winning just to get nailed for first degree or demonetized. No! Simply competing in the games is one thing since you can just claim you were under duress. But as far as the law is concerned, fearing someone will kill you doesn't justify killing an innocent third party. Besides, this wasn't even part of the challenge. Oh well, at least he doesn't have to worry about Ruth screwing him over at the very end. Or does he? Hmm find out in a bit. For now, the five remaining contestants are headed into game five, hide and seek. Yeah. And this one is even more breakable than the last, especially if you have a team. You see, in normal hide and seek, the game ends once everyone's found. But in this case, it's over as soon as Fox Guy kills someone. That means instead of using the 60 second head start to hide in this dump, we can use it to savagely beat one of the other players and leave them bleeding at his feet, like an offering to a vengeful ancient god, or in this case, a YouTuber. On the other hand, if we're solo, all we have to do is wait until everyone else hides, and then make a trail with our clothing to lead the freak right to them. And don't worry, this is the last time in this video I'll suggest stripping down as a legitimate strat. Well, probably. Of course, if you'd rather keep your clothes on, pfft, another approach would be to squeeze into someone else's hiding spot and then toss them out in the open once the seeker gets close. This is ultimately the approach that Walt and Squish used to cross out Maxine with some pretty interesting results. <laughs> Jesus, who the hell is this guy? Oh, by the way, nice teamwork, you guys. Yet again, not only could you have ganged up on Squish to make sure he got squeezed out first, both Carrie and AJ had a chance to grab that bayonet and jam it through Big Bad's eye holes. I mean, if you're still trying to escape, this might have been the best and only chance you're going to get. Put the juggernaut down, and then try to ambush the other two and take their weapons. Instead, no one even moved a muscle until Maxine got her neck snapped. Then again, maybe getting away isn't as big a priority as they were letting on. Mm. 
And yes, I did see the part where Carrie had a chance to run away after one of the henchmen seemingly turned a blind eye. But remember, this entire house would have to be rigged with cameras to make this game work. It is for a YouTube video after all. Chances are, had she gone out that window, the other guard would have smoked her on the spot. At least, I would certainly hope so. I don't know, maybe I'm doing their work for them. In any case, we're headed into game number six, Tetherball. This one will be decided by three rounds of 1v1, with the losers of rounds one and two squaring off in round three to see who gets eliminated. The game itself is fairly straightforward first one to wrap the ball around the pole wins. However, like all the other games, there's a twist. Well, maybe. It's been a while since I last played this game and I don't remember the ball looking like a morning star. Regardless, the best strategy here remains the same. Try to hit the ball downward at a steep angle so that it swings up over your opponent's head. This approach will be particularly useful for AG and Squish, who are both taller than their respective adversaries. Naturally, the spikes introduce a layer of difficulty, but there's still ways we can work around them. First, we need to take off all our clothes and, <laughs> just kidding, it's just our shoes this time. By slipping our shoes over our hands, we can hit the ball harder without worrying about hurting ourselves. Obviously, the moment we do this, everyone else will follow suit, but at least it brings this game closer to a recess version. Plus, if we lose our first match, at least we'll still have uninjured hands for the elimination round. Now, if protecting ourselves like this isn't allowed, I had to make sure to only hit the ball with a clenched fist to protect the palms of my hand, as damaging them will make it a lot more difficult to manipulate objects effectively, something we can't afford to risk when there's still two more games remaining. I mean, just look Look at how f***ed up AJ, Squish, and Walt are after just a single round. Go two more rounds slapping at it open-handed like that, and you'll never play piano again. And this is where Carrie's able to get ahead. After seeing the damage sustained by both players in the first round, she opts to simply throw her match against Squish without even touching the ball. This ensures she'll have fresh hands going up against Walt, which is really bad news for him. That's pretty good for an airsoft gun. Gotta hand it to Carrie and AJ. I never would have thought to try something like that. Probably because the thought of losing at anything makes my teeth hurt. Thankfully, it only ever happens when the rest of my team is pure garbage. So anyway, on to the game number seven, Hangman. Oh, sorry, I mean hang person. I'm sure you could easily imagine how this could be turned into a death game. But in this case, there's no actual involved at all. It sucks, I know. Don't get too disappointed though, because it does involve elect- which is the next best thing. Just like the regular game, everyone will take turns guessing the letters used in a particular phrase. However, instead of drawing a stick figure, each incorrect guess will result in progressively more intense electric shocks. Players will only have two seconds to guess a letter during their turn, or they can attempt to solve the phrase for a chance at being released from their chair. First one to die loses. Honestly, there's nothing here in terms of strategy that differs from regular Hangman. Although for such a childish game, it's really more complex complex than one might expect. Obviously, vowels are the best place to start, but which ones do you start with? Well, going off the concise Oxford Dictionary, the letter A is the most common vowel in words four letters or less. The letter E is the most common in words ranging from six to 12 letters. Looking at the board, we have a six letter word, a four letter word, and a three letter word, and a nine letter word. So, we'll want to start with either A or E. After after that, things fall more into chance, so we'll want to pick out letters based solely on their frequency of use in English vocabulary until we can start to recognize the words on screen. In order, and you need to remember this, that's R-I-O-T-N-S-L-C-U-D-P-M-H G B F Y W K V X Z J and Q. All right, you got that? Cool. As long as neither of our fellow contestants do the same, following this sequence as best as we can between their choices gives us the best chance of not getting shocked. And really, that's what this is all about. Otherwise, it comes down to blind luck and recognizing the phrase sooner than anyone else. What we really don't want to do is say nothing 
because as Squish finds out twice, nothing is not a letter and you will get zapped. But just when Marl Fox is about to crank it up to 11, Squish saves his own skin at the last second by guessing the phrase. Maxine lost the Octo Games, which she almost certainly did. Now we're down to just carrying AJ. And with the new phrase up on the board, the only thing either of them can do is take it from the top. This time we've got a six, a five, and a four. So I'd definitely start with E instead of A before running through the rest of that series, which you all remember, right? Lucky for Carrie, she can just run straight through the list as AJ refuses to play if it means she gets eliminated. Isn't that nice of him? You can tell how touched Carrie is by all the crying, although she sure as hell doesn't try that hard to talk him out of it. Later, bro. <laughs> Wow, imagine finding out your son let himself die so some chick he just met could blow up on YouTube, or at least try to anyway. There's still one last challenge separating our last two contestants from the grand prize and the grave. Game eight, capture the flag. And since we haven't actually heard from Jax Pro this entire video, I'll let him explain the rules himself. The first person to hold the flag for three seconds wins. You cannot kill or knock out the other contestant. If you do, you will be eliminated. Seems a little too simple for a final game if you ask me, but whatever dude, it's your legacy. As for strategy, if I knew I was faster than my opponent, I'd just burn them in the race and watch them die, plain and simple. However, if it looks like a toss up, or I was up against a much more physical opponent like Carrie is in this situation, I wouldn't let it come down to a race in the first place. In that case, the only option as I see it would be to immediately grab onto the other player and start clawing and scratching at their face biting their extremities and just generally making life unpleasant for them. The idea here is to instigate physical violence without doing any real damage in the hope that they will, in turn, hit us back hard enough that we can pretend we're knocked out. Or maybe they'll actually knock us out. Either way, according to Jax Pro, if it looks like they knocked out their opponent, they lose. Which should mean that we win. Or, at the very least, go on to a solo challenge. That's right going to flop. It works for the pros after all. Of course, this isn't going to get everyone, but in this particular case, we know that Squish has a history of losing his cool and attacking people, which pretty much makes him the perfect sucker. Unfortunately, Carrie chooses to play it straight, and as a result, she's left to watch in horror as Squish achieves ultimate victory, or so he thinks. Just then, Squish notices one of the Octogame's henchmen waving at him with a torn off sleeve, but by the time the significant significance of this sets in, it's already too late. You see, it turns out Ruth actually survived their last encounter during musical chairs, and apparently Jax Pro liked the cut of her jib so much he brought her on board and let her rig the final round. The flag Squish is holding right now is nothing but a decoy meant to distract him from the real one, the one that Carrie just grabbed three seconds ago, and you know what that means. That's what you get for playing the tough guy. And with that, Carrie will go on to begin her life as a YouTube star with a massive community guideline strike. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the channel and all associated social media accounts were immediately nuked for promoting what is effectively a film. Here's hoping it was all worth it. In the end, only two of the contestants survived. Although this was pretty much going to happen no matter what. That being said, by sticking to the strategies we proposed, I'm confident we could have beaten each of the games, thereby granting us eternal glory as YouTube's greatest creator. For that reason, I think the Octo Games was beaten. Moral of the story, fame comes at a price. Oh, and I'm looking for volunteers for an in-person event I'm hosting. Hold digging experience is a plus, but not required.